Welcome to this lecture on the analysis of actual Rankine cycle. Consider a steam power plant operating on the actual Rankine cycle. Steam enters the turbine at 3 MPa and 350 degrees Celsius and is condensed in the condenser at a pressure of 75 kPa. The mass flow rate of the steam through the cycle is 35 kg per cycle. The isentropic efficiency of the pump and the turbine is 90%. Show the cycle on a TS diagram and schematic diagram with respect to the saturation lines and determine the following. The actual pump work, the actual heat input in the boiler, the actual heat output in the condenser, the actual thermal efficiency, the actual turbine work output, the actual net power output of the power plant, the actual heat rate, and the actual back work ratio. Based on this given problem, we are given with the actual Rankine cycle. The steam enters the turbine at 3 MPa and 350 degrees Celsius. The condenser pressure is 75 kPa. We're also given with a mass flow rate of 35 kg per second. The isentropic efficiency of the pump and the turbine is 90%. Just like what we did before, we will draw the schematic diagram as well as the TS diagram of this cycle. Since this is already an actual run kind cycle, we consider the irreversibilities, especially in the, in the pump, as well as the irreversibility in the turbines, since these two are the greatest irreversibility occurring in this Rankine cycle. That is why we have here point 0.1, and also after the isentropic compression, we can find that the actual uh, enthalpy at the exit of the pump is no longer at 2s but is already at 0.2a. Then after that, it is now heated in the boiler and reach 0.3, the highest point in this cycle. And it undergoes expansion in the turbine. And because of the irreversibility in the turbine, the Expansion now is no longer isentropic and it approaches this curve here to 4A. And then finally, the, the steam is condensed and it releases heat in the condenser and it reaches the original point which is the point 1. So in this cycle, we have uh, 6 important points. We have point 1, point 2s, point 2a, point 3, point 4a, and point 4s. The s here denotes isentropic processes while a here denotes actual point or actual uh, process. So we will begin our analysis by finding the enthalpies at the various points in the cycle. We can use the steam table. So state 1, this is a saturated liquid. So we can use the results that we have previously in finding the enthalpy at 75 kilopascal and that is 384.39 kilojoules per kilogram. We'll also find the entropy at point 1 using the same process and also the specific volume. Then we will proceed with point 2s. At point 2s, it is a subcooled liquid. The value of S2 is equal to S1 since process 1 to 2s is isentropic process. And that is why we can get the ideal uh, power input or work input in the pump using the formula specific volume multiplied by the difference of the pressure in the boiler and the condenser. So we compute first for the ideal or the isentropic pump work 
by multiplying by plugging in the value of the specific volume and also the value of the boiler pressure and the condenser pressure. So we obtain uh, the isentropic pump work or ideal pump work as 3.0341 kilojoules per kilogram. And if we want to get the, the power input in the pump, we just multiply that value by the mass flow rate. So we obtain the power input in the pump as 0 0.1062 megawatt. So take note that the results that we obtain here, this is the ideal or the isentropic pump work. And we will use that result in order to get the value of H2S or the enthalpy at point 2S. So by plugging in the value of the uh, power input in the pump, or the work input in the pump, as well as the value of H1, we can get the value of H2S as 387.4241. So in this, uh, we just get the value of H2S. Then at state 3, this is a superheated vapor, so we will just use our uh, vapor table in the steam table. So we obtain H3 as the enthalpy at 3 megapascal and 350 degrees Celsius at this point. So we have 3,115.3 kilojoules per kilogram. We also get H3. And at state 4, this is a saturated mixture. And we are going to get first the value of 4S. And we can see that this is isentropic process for process 3 to 4S. So we will use the formula that we have in obtaining the enthalpy for a mixture. So we just solve for the quality first, x4 at this point, 4s. So using the value of the entropy, which is 6.7428, we will get the value of SF4, which is HSF at 75 kilopascal. As also, we will get the value of SFG4. And then we'll plug in the values to get the value of the quality, which is 0 0.8857. So finally, we can get the value of HF, uh, HS4 by getting the value first of HF4 and HFG4. And finally, the value of H4S is 2,402.546 kilojoules per kilogram. So the summary of enthalpies using the steam table is shown here. We can also get the enthalpies at the various points in the cycle using the software. So as a comparison, the results are more or less the same. So in this problem, we are going to use the results that we obtain in the software. So we will use these values here. So you can actually use the value of the steam table also if you want to. But for this example, I will illustrate it by using the values here in the software. So take note that the process now is an actual runtime cycle. So we need to get the value of the actual enthalpy at the pump exit, which is the point H2A. And in order to get that, we will use the relationship between H2S and H2A. We know that from the given, the isentropic efficiency of the pump is 90%. So that is also equals to 0 0.9. From the software result, we knew that H2S is 387.48 kilojoules per kilogram and the value of H1 is 384.44 kilojoules per kilogram. So we just plug in those values in this formula to have this one. So as you can see, the only unknown here is the value H2A. So we just solve for H2A and that is equals to 387.8177 kilojoules per kilogram. So now this is the actual value of the enthalpy at the exit of the pump. If we can also observe, this is uh, greater than the ideal result, which is the H2S of 387.48. In the same way, we're also going to get the value of the actual enthalpy at the turbine exit, which is H4A. 
we also have this relationship for the turbine isentropic efficiency. From the given, we know that the turbine isentropic efficiency is 90% or 0.9. From the software result, we learned that H3 is 3,116.11 and also H4S is 2,403. So we'll just uh, plug in those values in the formula and solve for the value of H4A. So the value of H4A is 2,000. 474.31. So if you're going to compare the value of H4S and H4A, the value of H4A is greater. So now that we have the value of the actual enthalpies at the exits of the pump and the turbine, we are now ready to get the, the unknown quantities. So first, the actual pump work. So for the actual pump work, we're going to use the formula H2A minus H1, or simply that is just the, the difference of the enthalpies uh, at, the, at the pump exit and inlet. The actual pump exit is H2A and the inlet is H1. So we just get the values from the calculations, which are also found here in the table. So the value are shown and we can now get the value of the actual pump work input which is 3.3777 kilojoules per kilogram and if you multiply that with the mass flow rate we can get the, the actual pump power input and that is 0 0.1182 megawatt then we will also get the actual heat input in the boiler so in the boiler, you can see that our exit of the boiler is at H3 and the inlet is at H2A. So that is the actual value also. So we will plug in the value of H3 and H2A. So we can get the actual heat input in the boiler. And if we multiply that value with the mass flow rate, we can also get the value of the actual power input in the boiler. And that is 95.49 megawatt. Then for the actual heat output in the condenser, we will use the value H4A since this is the actual value here and also the, at the exit of the condenser that is H1. So we just substitute the value. So we can get the actual heat output in the condenser as 2089.87 kilojoules per kilogram. Multiplying that value with the mass flow rate, we can get the actual power output in the uh, power uh, rejected in the condenser. That is 73.15 megawatt. Since we already have the value of the actual heat input and heat output in, the, in this cycle, we can get the thermal efficiency. And that is the actual thermal efficiency. So we just uh, substitute the value of the actual heat output and heat input respectively. So the thermal efficiency is 0.234 or 23.4 percent and then we'll proceed to the actual turbine work output so for the actual turbine work output we just substitute the value of h3 which is at the inlet of the turbine and h4a which is the outlet of the turbine substituting the value from the results and then multiplying that value with the mass flow rate we can get the actual power output of the turbine and that is 22.46 megawatt for the actual power output of the power plant we just we can use the formula the actual uh, heat uh, power input in the boiler minus the power ejected in the condenser so substituting those values so we can get the actual power output of the power plant as 22.34 megawatt. We can also use the alternative formula based on the actual power output of the turbine and the actual power input in the pump. Substituting this value, we can also obtain the same result. For the actual heat rate, we know that the formula is 3412 divided by the thermal efficiency. We just substitute the actual thermal efficiency and we can get the actual heat rate as 14,581.2 BTU per kilowatt hour. And finally, for the actual backwork ratio, we just substitute the value of the 
actual power input in the pump and also the actual power output in the turbine. So substituting those values, we can get the actual back work ratio as 0.53%. So if we're going to summarize the results and compare the results from the ideal Rankine cycle, which we solved in the previous presentation, and now from this uh, actual Rankine cycle, we can summarize the results as follows. If you're going to, to, to observe and to make some comments, you may say that there is an increase in the required power input in the in the pump and this is due to the irreversibility in the pump and in order to uh, produce the same result we need to increase the power input in the pump to overcome those irreversibilities also we can find that there is an increase in the heat input or in the power input in the boiler so in order to produce the same power output we need to increase now the heat or the power that we produce in the in the boiler to overcome those irreversibilities same also with the heat output we, or the power output we can see that in the actual Rankine cycle there is an increase in the heat rejected or heat loss to the environment and also for the heat rate we can see that in the actual Rankine cycle, it will require uh, a higher heat rate as compared to the ideal Rankine cycle. So it means that more fuel that should be combusted in the boiler. Also for the back work ratio, because there is an increase in the pump power input or work input. We can also observe here that the power output of the turbine has decreased. The reason for this, again, is because of the irreversibilities in the, in the turbine. So the result of that is to decrease the power that the turbine can produce. As a result, the power output of this power plant has also decreased. And consequently, there's also a decrease in the thermal efficiency. So we can see that because of the irreversibilities, such as heat loss and frictional loss in the cycle, the actual Rankine cycle is actually uh, will result to a lesser cycle efficiency. So I hope that you learned something from this presentation.